and it is 3 p.m. exactly. <laughs> okay, um, greetings everyone. My name is Liz Dunlap. Um, as some of you may already know me, especially from emailing me at prelaw at pad dot org. Um, and I am just going to type my email here in the chat box, just so you all have it, can save it and, or memorize it. Um, so uh, just formally, so you're aware of my title, I'm the Pre-Law Operations Coordinator that's working here at File for Delta's executive office. Um, my office hours are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, um, or, you know, again, for anyone wondering what time zone we're in, and our office is currently comprised of eight staff members that are all here to help you out and make the most of your PAD experience. Um, and also, you're welcome to have your cameras on or off. It's up to you and your comfort level. So I just have a few housekeeping items that I'm going to be going over um, before we really get started into discussion. So um, if we finish early, um, or sorry, <laughs> backing up, like I said, this is going to be recorded. Um, and I'm going to go through my um, presentation. We'll move on to discussion. If we finish early, that's great. But I'm also happy to stay and chat after the meeting with anyone or any groups of people um, that have further questions that did not get covered during this. Um, so as for questions, please raise your hands or put questions in the chat. And I can either answer as we go along um, or I can also wait at the end of our meeting. Okay, anybody have any questions right now? Anything burning on your minds? No? Okay. Um, all right, so I let's dive into our topics for today. I wanna to begin today's presentation just by going over the major deadlines, not just for the spring, but also a few major events in the fall that you can start preparing for now. Additionally, I wanna share some notes about our current fee structure that you can jot down and keep in mind going forward when you're recruiting new students. And it would probably also help if I shared my screen so you can also see my presentation. Okay, so sorry for that delay, everyone. All right, so can everyone see my screen? Okay, lovely. All right, so if you are already current officers or have been previously reported to me, then you should have already received some emails already from our office about some of the following important dates and events that I'm about to cover. And so April 5th, that is our deadline to hold officer elections. Yes, spring election should happen annually and ideally once per year so that newly elected officers have at least one full year to fulfill their role and um, reap the benefits of being a leader within the chapter. We know sometimes it's not always possible to make this exact deadline. I've had chapters even do this earlier. Um, if you're on a quarter system with your school instead of semester, I have chapters that also send me elections um, at the beginning of December even. So that's fine. I'm flexible. Um, but you know, if you're in the pl uh, planning process for elections right now, typically I would advise though to aim for as close as um, possible to spring this April 5th deadline. And then once newly elected officers are selected, please ensure that those new officers um, are reported to my email, prelotpad.org immediately. I want to make sure that um, we have those records up to date in our system and for communications going forward. Um, and we also want chapters to have as much time as possible to transition to their officer roles. So um, newly elected officers, by the way, don't actually have to take over immediately until the officer transition is complete, which leads us to our next date. That's April 17th. Um, so during the officer transition process, the incoming officers and outgoing officers should work together to create um, the fall 2023 semester calendars. Um, so calendars are also due on this date as well. Um, and then other items that uh, incoming and outgoing officers should be working on together includes passing of bank account information, 
social media and chapter passwords um, and that kind of stuff. So all of the chapter materials that the previous officers had, um, you should be giving those to the incoming officers going forward. Next deadline is first Monday in June. Um, that's June 5th, 2023 this year. That's when pre-law awards applications are due. This is your time to shine. <laughs> I cannot stress this enough. We don't ask for much here at the executive office, except that we really want to see your chapters and officers recognized for all of their hard work and on um, during their tenure. So as a member of the executive office, I can assure you that in working with your chapters, we are also aware of what you're accomplishing and the events and programming that you're holding. And so we want to see you apply for awards. We want to see you get that recognition. I already know we have some chapters here that have uh, applied in the past and have been recognized. So we know pre-laws can also get competitive, to say the least. Um, if your chapter is recognized um, for an award, then you are, you know, at minimum are able to bring home bragging rights. Um, in addition to our lovely certificates um, and other stuff that we provide to chapters that, um, you know, end up placing uh, during the awards. So next, fall 2023, we have our annual pre-law conference. Some of you may already be aware of this. This is the biggest national pre-law event of the year. Each year we hold a conference and it's an event filled with exciting workshops, keynotes, there's a mock trial competition and a law school expo. If you're seriously thinking about a career in the legal field, then this is the event to attend that's gonna give you a leg up in that journey. Um, more information and details about pre-law conference will be shared closer to the event. We are still trying to figure out our dates um, and what's gonna happen with that. But I would say most likely it's going to be in person and in DC this year. That's what we're planning for. We also give out um, need-based scholarships for attendance um, and towards the registration fee for this event as well. And I'll be sharing that in communications with pre law students um, as time goes on. Okay, almost got ahead of myself. <laughs> Last um, important date is Pad Founders Day. That's when spring 2023 semester programming is due. So never too early to start thinking about even what you wanna do in next for next year. Um, and just a little bit about Founders Day too. Our fraternity was founded on November 8th, 1902. Um, for those that may not uh, be aware, this is a special day for Pad brothers and sisters, um, friends, partners, siblings, and sponsors to come together and give back and make an impact um, towards the student, the school and the legal profession. Um, so during Founders Week, um, Phi Alpha Delta members, they come together and they celebrate the history of the fraternity and grow closer to one another. And um, this is also just a uh, you know, programming tip here, but if you are a chapter that wants to do events around Founders Week, then you are more than welcome. We encourage that and you know, we wanna recognize that too on our social media and, and all of those things. Okay, so real quick on the fee structure and please let me know if I'm also talking too fast. I'm trying to get through as much as quickly as possible so we can go to Q&A stuff. So for the uh, fee structure, many of you probably know this, but the pre-law student members international initiation fee is currently set at 125. This fee is going to last you through your undergraduate career and only needs to be paid once when joining. If you are a pre-law student um, that is graduating and is gonna be attending law school and wish to join an active law chapter at that law school, we have a senior transition fee. That fee is $70 and is one time. There's no fees if a if the student is transferring schools, for example, and maybe they go from one active pre-law chapter to another um, active pre-law chapter, there is no fee um, to transition. Something that I wanted to touch on too, um, that is one of the biggest questions that we get asked is, do we waive fees? Um, on the international initiation fee? The short answer to that is we don't. Um, one, PAD is a nonprofit organization. We are a 501c7 nonprofit. And those initiation fees are necessary for us to operate. 
The 125 covers the initiation materials for the student. It covers chapter insurance, and it allows us to provide free recruitment materials, event materials, and free webinars and content, member benefits as well, um, such as LSAT and test prep services, et cetera. So all of that is wrapped up in that 125. Um, I think it's important to note for recruitment purposes that a 125 fee for undergraduate membership and how member benefits tie into that cost is pretty good. It's com also competitive compared to other organizations. Um, and while we don't waive the fees, I do have it noted here too that we do have a customizable payment plan available towards the uh, for the 125 fee. So students that enter into that payment plan can pay towards that at their leisure um, and they can customize that to the frequency and amount that is comfortable for them. Um, and again, the whole 125 is one time it lasts your entire undergraduate career. There are no renewal fees or anything like that as far as your individual membership. Whew. All right, is everyone still with me? <laughs> um, okay, so since we covered fees and the last thing I mentioned about it is if we waive fees, um, that's gonna transition us to our next section, spring recruitment. Why is spring recruitment important? Um, chapters should be recruiting all the time. Um, consistent intake of new members is uh, you know, also healthiest as, a as opposed to spikes in membership. There's a little bit of a difference between spring and fall. Spring is a good time to focus on anyone who didn't join last semester in the fall and to adjust your strategies, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, usually fall is naturally set up. So you're recruiting new students such as freshmen um, and transfer students through orientation, organization fairs, et cetera. Spring can be a time to follow up with those people who showed interest um, but didn't join in the fall. Um, and I also want to encourage you to not forget to engage with any grad students on your campus. Um, they are also welcome to join a pre-law chapter, and we are proud to have an open membership policy. So as long as the student is considered in good standing with the school, per the school's definition of good standing, then that student can is eligible um, to enroll uh, and be a pre-law chapter member. So if you're struggling with engagement in your chapter, I know that this is a problem for everyone. Um, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I have the most perfect solution for you. I know that um, burnout is real. Sometimes burnout can take a couple of years um, uh, for it to go away and we're all feeling it still these days. So, um, I think as far as addressing that um, and those engagement issues within your chapter, um, one of the things that I do recommend when you're, you know, engaging your current membership and even new members is getting members involved as soon as they've joined. Build on that enthusiasm and have them join maybe a committee or even shadow a committee. Um, have them attend an event, which is another reason why it's super important to have programming together ahead um, of the semester starting, if it can be helped. Um, so as chapter officers, you know, it's good, you should be working on a communication strategy. I recommend appointing um, a communications chair position um, or someone in that role that might wanna do marketing or anything like that. Um, and just so they also are in charge, you know, of communications for that. So. You know, make sure you have a chapter group chat going, any regular email blasts. If you need help putting those together, I'm happy to take a look um, at any drafts you may have or even suggest some templates to use. And it should go without saying at this point, um, since, you know, many of you are, you know, are savvy, I'm sure, with social media. So you, you should have that up um, or functioning, too. Um, Another thing I suggest too is evalu evaluate your calendar and programming and see which events do well and which ones don't. Um, if your chapter, you know, has a point system, I'm going to plug that as well. That's definitely a way to incentivize your membership, not punish them, um, 
but you know that is a way to boost engagement. I also have um, instructions on how to put together a point system that I'm happy to share if anyone wants to email me um, or know more about that even at the end of our call. So we provide steps um, uh, as well on how to uh, implement that in our operations guide. But um, yeah, that's just a, a few ways to boost that. So um, with that said, it's a new semester. You can get a new strategy going. What kind of things can you try in the spring? Um, like I already mentioned, follow up with anyone who showed interest in PAD in the fall but didn't actually join. Maybe see if they want to join now. Um, don't forget to engage with um, non-traditional students, you know, part-time students as well. Focus on building your connections with other organizations on campus. You can be a member of PAD and a member of any other non-legal fraternity organization. I have pre-law chapters that work with um, their, you know, business um, student organizations or, you know, other orgs, um, you know, on campus. So you might even be able to recruit um, from those groups as well to add to membership or, you know, co-host and plan events together as it makes sense. Um, and last, you can tailor your spring events to topics or programs. Um, to things that will help your members also pre uh, prepare for finals, um, you know, and even LSAT um, exams if they're going to be sitting for that. All right, planning for elections. This is one of the big things for spring. Um, so I'm going to start by going over a basic process for elections. There's a lot of ways to do these steps, but these are the main critical elements for that. Um, first thing you want to do is advertise um, to anyone who is a member in good standing with the chapter. Um, so those individuals are eligible to run for office as well as vote. Um, it's best practice that all chapter members receive this information of what positions are open and what the duties of each position are. You can find position descriptions in the chapter operations handbook. When advertising, set a due date for nominations. Um, that's very important and make sure that um, our members also can nominate themselves or other members. Okay, next, when you're collecting nominations, consider if you wanna ask for any candidacy statements or questionnaires. I don't suggest making this part mandatory actually, but um, it is nice if you wanna give members the option to submit something. Um, even, you know, even if you decide to still have like an in-person candidate speech. Once you have the full slate of candidates, you'll want to publish the slate and all the logistical details to the chapter. This will include when elections will be formally held and what format, if it's virtual or in-person or both, and when chapter members will have an option to hear or read candidates' platforms. Personally, I think it's a good idea to have these published in advance so everyone has a chance to hear, but you can set things up so candidates can speak in person before voting. You can also allow candidates to have other members speak for them in support. Um, we actually do this for our national PAD elections. The other critical part is the voting itself. If it's in person, you can do this by a hand, a uh, hand raise, a paper ballot, or verbal vote. If it's virtual, it's a good idea to set up a voting period. I would give it about 48 to 72 hours um, and then let everyone cast their votes electronically. Once the voting part is complete, publicize your results and start setting up the officer transition. Um, part of this publicizing is one telling me here at the executive office um, who the board is going to be, and then your chapter president, any faculty advisors, and if required, um, your school administration involved with student organizations, activities, and fraternities. All right. So virtual versus in person. Um, so just a you know a few notes on that one um, when it comes to elections. I you know at this point I say accessibility continues to be key in 2023. Um, one of the benefits you know I'll go into benefits um, or pros and cons of virtual versus in-person elections. So with in-person, um, 
One of the benefits is you can have people present their candidacy, candidacy statements live um, and offer a chance for questions. It also goes faster, actually. Um, one of the cons of in person, though, is that if someone can't attend, um, it, lim it limits participation. So one of the benefits of virtual is that in some ways um, it can be a little bit more streamlined. But the con is that, you know, it can take longer. There's less chance for candidates to interact with members. Um, and so, you know, if there's a happy medium, you can always consider a hybrid option. Um, you can host a candidate forum where candidates can speak, answer questions, but also publish written statements and then have the voting part electronically. And it, that can be done in, um, in a shorter time period. So common election issues that I see. Um, one of the common issues I see is participation from chapter members, like not having people actually vote. If you can't get everyone together in a room, maybe a virtual vote is the way to go. We consider um, here at PAD a quorum um, or 20% of your chapter's membership in good standing um, as like, you know, at least a minimum, um, you know, that's allowed. For voting. Uh, if you can't get that, though, definitely let me know. And we have some specific procedures for how to assist with that. Um, so you may not always see 100% participation with elections. Another common issue is a contentious election. Something else to definitely let me know about. <laughs> um, we know elections can get nasty. If you feel this is going to be an issue, I recommend inviting a faculty advisor or someone on campus that can be a neutral third party um, to help mediate, um, you know, as long as they know what your what the election rules are. Um, and, you know, if you can't get that, I'm also here um, and uh, we can work something out so that I can be involved um, to help oversee anything if need be. Another issue that we see is lack of candidates. Um, I recommend you to just fill the positions as you can, add more officers later. The main key positions I would focus on would be president, vice president, and treasurer. President and treasurer in particular, because those are the two positions um, that are supposed to have access to your chapter bank account. Um, and that's written within our fraternity policies. And um, the last common issue is if you're doing virtual tech issues, they happen, um, you know, but uh, I would try to be as, as flexible as you can. And, you know, um, for people that are participating in a virtual election, you know, be as patient as possible with people that are organizing it, because um, even with the best planned event, when there's tech involved, stuff happens. Okay. Officer transition checklist. I promise we're almost done. <laughs> um, now that you have your new officers, it's time to get them settled into their roles. So what does that look like? Your transition can be a process or a single meeting. Um, it can be everyone all together or a one-on-one -on -one with each officer training their replacement. Like I said before, this doesn't have to be right away. Um, if you can, try to have a shadowing system for a month or so afterwards. Um, of course, timing that between finals and summer break um, too. But, um, you know, it can also be done um, in person on campus or even virtually too. It's up to you. Just make sure that it is done. So, Review your checklist. Um, this checklist is in the new officer guide that is on our website. And it is also something that I provide to in new incoming officers as soon as they're reported to me. Um, that document has everything that a new officer would need to know. Um, and best practices and practical ideas, I would say, to make sure that you have your um, transition go smoothly is um have some sort of binder flash drive or a google drive with your chapter's documents um think about you know um and, and that also includes like accounts passwords all the files the things that you see on the slide here um and 
you know, something I would consider too for the outgoing officers, think about what you wish you'd known starting your officer tenure. Um, and that's, you know, just you can keep it in notes, uh, depending on the relationship too that you have with the incoming officers, you can talk to them about that, that and any advice or wisdom you'd like to impart to them. Um, to the new uh, officers that are incoming, take notes during the year because it's going to help you <laughs> as you go along and it's good to reflect back on. Um, for a new officer, something else to keep in mind for operations is you need to make sure that those new officers have access to bank um, and school contacts so that they are supported. The banking stuff is very important. Um, if I can emphasize, because I've seen it time and time again, where that part gets forgotten during the officer transition process, and then new officers email me or our office, and they're like, hey, I don't have access to our chapter bank account. What is our chapter bank account? Um, and nine chances out of 10, um, all of that information was held by the old officers. And also, our office does not um, we're, we're not, uh, managing, I'll say chapter finances that, um, we can help with getting that together. For example, if you reach out to a bank and want to set up a chapter, um, bank account as a student organization, or if your campus has something involved, if they require certain paperwork, like tax documentation or our fraternities articles of incorporation or an authorization letter, I can help assist in those items, but as far as, you know, transactions being made, who has access to it and the, you know, actual numbers and the, the um, and all of that, that is on the officers um, to be aware of. Um, so I would also recommend with that said too, is if you have a faculty advisor, make sure your faculty advisor is also aware of um, some of the ins and outs with your chapter bank account you know, passwords and, and all of that, like I said, with your documents, um, you know, because your faculty advisor will be there, um, also assisting incoming officers after you've gone on and graduated. So it's also good to have someone else on campus that's aware of that stuff. Okay. Um, all right. So planning chapter events, and programs. Um, just some general event advice that I have. Um, when it comes to putting your calendars together um, for semester programming, we do have requirements and examples listed out in our chapter operations guide. Please use them. Um, we can also provide past calendars from your chapter. Um, it's part of a reason why we ask to review them too. We collect those. Um, so just as a general reminder, your calendar should be about 75% professional and academic, 10% social, 15% community service, plus fundraising events as needed. Um, chapter programming is not only your best recruitment tool, as I've touched on before, it's what keeps your membership engaged as well within the chapters. Um, some other advice on events that I have is, you know, like I said, work with other organizations to co-sponsor and share resources. You can double up on your event categories um, for, you know, if you decide to have something that is both um, academic and maybe a fundraiser, if you do a, a movie night or, or hosting anything like that, um, that's an idea. And, you know, you can even have a niche or signature event that you're known for. I have some chapters that do annual retreats that are highly successful. Um, so if anyone here on um, this, you know, um, webinar also has a major event that their chapter does, please feel free to share that in the chat. Um, you know, that is also like a good example to see. Um, so I've talked a little at length already about the pros and cons of conducting virtual versus in-person events. I think at this point, we don't have to, um, you know, hash that out even further. Um, so I know I said, as I said it before, that was mostly applying it to elections, but it can also just be applied to event planning in general. National events to be aware of um, are pre-law conference. I've you know said a little bit about that before. We have a pad speaker series. 
You can even host events around our speaker series for watch parties or share those recordings in your communications and social media as a recruitment tool for new members to get them interested. Um, we have a pad YouTube where our speaker series is held. Um, if you want to link to that, I'm happy to share it. Um, you can email me for that. Besides um, that, we have partner content. Um, you've probably gotten emails before from some of our partners like Access Lux and PowerScore, um, among others that are also happy to um, hold events for your chapter specifically for that, and they can find speakers for you. Um, so um, between bad speaker series or partner content, um, you can even think about participating in other chapters events. We have our pad calendar on the website. So take a look at that because um, we're also going to be we're always sharing um, that stuff of another chapter um, or pad member is holding an event. So pre-law conference, um, just going to briefly talk about that as it's still in the works. Um, so pre-law conference, it's an annual event. It occurs each fall, usually around November. It's one of our largest pre-law events in the country that brings together um, other pre-law members, um, law school admissions counselors, alumni, and professionals in the legal field for networking. Ding, ding, ding. That's the big thing. Um, and we also have workshops, keynote speakers, a highly anticipated mock trial competition. If your school does not have a mock trial competition, but you're thinking about participating, um, get in contact with our office and we can see how we can assist you maybe in getting that set up. Um, and uh, yeah, our law school expo, you know, we have social events. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's just one of my main takeaways. It's just a very fun event. Um, and we do have um, funding options available for that too. I've said we have a scholarship. I am pleased you know, to say that last year's pre-law conference, we had over $20,000 um, from sponsors that were um, uh, given to our organization so just so we can award as many scholarships um, as possible for students to be able to attend and have their registration fee waived. Um, and so, you know, we'll take a look and see what this year um, will look like, but that's something that, you know, we, we've always been able to provide scholarships. But in addition to that, because there's other costs, you know, such as travel costs, you know, when you're there, um, you know, lodgings, you know, eating, getting around um, DC, and all of that, I do recommend that your chapter starts thinking about fundraising and whether you want to have a fundraising event or even um, going to your school and, you know, potentially have, you know, starting the conversations to see if the school can also provide any sort of grant funding or anything. So that way your chapter can attend. Um, this is an educational event, too, which is something to Keep in mind and emphasize if you do talk to your school about that as well. And as soon as we have our dates um, and location uh, for this year finalized, um, we will be working on really pushing out communications. And I even have um, a budget, like a sample budget and funding template um, and proposal letter that you can provide to your school if you want to go to them and ask for funding for this event. So that's my thing on pre-law conference. Um, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm just going to end with this last slide here. Um, these are some pre-law officers resources. Um, most of our operating guides, um, all of our operating guides can be found in our pre-law officer resources page. Um, and the main guides to really, you know, um, focus in on our operations guide, new officers resource guide, our fundraising guide, and your pre-law model bylaws. For the last one, I'm going to say if your chapter has not, um, is not aware if you have chapter bylaws, update that using this um, form here uh, and make sure that it is turned to me for review. Um, and then after it's, you know, after I've given the go ahead, you can disseminate that out to your chapter for final vote and approval. And you, you want to make sure that your chapter members are also aware um, 
of your chapter bylaws um, and can also refer to that too themselves. <sighs> okay, so I'm done. Um, that was so much. Thank you all for sticking with me thus far. Um, and if you want to jump into our Q&A portion, I'm happy to do so. You're welcome to unmute yourself or if you have any questions or anything in the chat, um, just let me know. Hi, I have a question. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, Gavin. Yes, I can, Gavin. Okay. Yeah, I have a question um, and it's about initiation. I've had a few people reach out to me about initiation and what initiation should look like, how it should be performed, what should be done. I've kind of looked into some things, read in the pad, like sort of organization, how things should be structured, but I just kind of want to know from your perspective, what should we be doing? Do we light like candles or do we have to dress up or is it just more of like an informal sort of a thing? Um, this is one of those things where it's really up to you how formal you want it to be. Um, so for example, I've had a chapter hold one of their initiation ceremonies and um, their uh, one of their, their state courthouse um, type of thing. You can invite speakers um, or guests working in the legal field. You can invite, you know, people's families. Um, so uh, our pre-law book of the ritual, which I think you were referring to, is our guide that will give you a script of, you know, what to say and, you know, how to go about your initiation ceremony. And I'm going to drop this here in the chat for everyone. But, um, you know, you referred to, um, you know, lighting candles. You're welcome to do that. I would check with your school if you're holding the event on campus. Just check with your school, what your school's rules are about, um, you know, lighting any candles or anything like that. Um, you know, you can also hold your initiation ceremony virtually. We have, um, you know, another uh, version of our book of the ritual that is adapted for having virtual ceremony events too. Um, so, you know, it's it's up to you all. Um, and uh, with also the initiation ceremony, since we're on that subject, I want to remind everyone to, to make sure to request new member materials um, ahead, at least a week ahead of your initiation ceremony, um, you know, as you're recruiting new members. So um, Katie, who's our director of membership, she's going to be doing um, a membership meeting similar to this, but just to talk about um, membership stuff, you know, and everything that, you know, people should know that's going to be next week. Um, so you can talk to, you know, her more about like what that looks like, requesting materials, what is included, um, you know, and also she'll, I'm sure is going to run through to who is eligible to initiate it, to be initiated and who isn't. But um, yeah, as far as the structure of that, we do have the script to read, but you can definitely play around with it to make it as formal or informal as you want it to be. Uh, okay, thank you so much. <laughs> of course. Okay. Good afternoon. I have a question. I'm with the Spelman College chapter um, of pre-law. <laughs> And I was wondering, I saw on the website that we can request information on how to see members who are active and non-active, whether they've paid or not. Um, is it possible that we can get that information from you or do we request it on the website? Um, so Katie, again, who's our director of membership, she is a person to reach out about that. Um, and her email is pretty easy to remember because it's katieatpad.org. But we do have a, a request form that you can go through, um, and it's on our uh, pre-law officer resources page where you can request a chapter roster and get that. And then that'll break down, um, you know, who's paid, who's still pending payment, um, and who's already been initiated into the chapter. So I've also included that link here. Thank you. Yes. I have a question, um, piggybacking off of Kenya's question. Mm -hmm. So as
Sorry, I just muted myself. Um, as far as members who are pending payment, because I have a payment plan. Mm -hmm. um, for initiation, do I wait until that payment plan is completed? Or am I eligible to initiate before it's completed? Because I've made the initial payments. Um, yes, you can be initiated if you are enrolled into a payment plan um, okay. to answer your question. And that's also something to keep in mind, too, for everyone else um, as you're recruiting students. So you do have to complete that payment plan, of course, um, by the time you graduate. But to be initiated into the chapter, um, if you're on a pending, if you're on a payment plan, then you have been given the OK for that. OK. Okay, I have a couple questions I want to address in the chat box. Um, so Abigail has a question um, about students who transfer schools. What are the steps on the website or such um, for pre-law? So Abigail, if you um, are transferring schools, if you've gone from one you know, school where there's a pre-law chapter to another one where there's an active pre-law chapter, all you have to do is just email me um, and I'll you know, just go uh, on behind the scenes as far as our website, just to make sure that your information is updated and there's no fee or anything to transfer. Um, so, you know, as long as the chapter is active, we will transfer you to that. If the chapter is inactive, um, then there's, that opens up the option of if you want to reactivate the chapter, or you can also go to our membership auxiliary, um, which is a whole other membership tier. You still get the benefits of being a PAD member. You just um, won't be eligible to participate in any voting um, or be associated with a chapter, of course. And so that's a whole other conversation. And Katie also is someone that um, can definitely cover like more in depth about her membership auxiliary and everything during her membership meeting too. But um, yeah, the long and short of it, though, is if you transfer schools, um, just alert us so we can get you sorted to where you need to be. OK, so another question I have from Zoe, um, if I'm pronouncing your name correct. Um, so I'm wondering about current partnerships related to LSAT prep um, as we're looking to do more workshops this coming semester and would love to reach out to companies already partnered with PAD. Okay, so I'm going to point you towards our member benefits page. Um, and for officers, too, you might have also gotten, um, current officers might have gotten an email from me or should have received an email from me, I'm sorry, yesterday as well that has laid out our current partners um, for pre law specifically um, as it pertains to LSAT prep and other things. And you can even partner with them on um, for events and programming. So um, Kaplan, um, Power Score, LSAT prep, um, Right Law as well. And um, X Access Lex is also there too to assist you with the um, financing part of law school and you know what that looks for, you know, getting your budget together and things to consider. Um, so we have direct contacts with each of those organizations. Um, and if you want their emails, um, please shoot me an individual um, email and I'm happy to share their contacts with contacts with you. Um, but you'll also find on our member benefits page too, you'll see who our current partners are for LSAT prep. And I've included that link in the chat too. Okay, so my other question. Hi, so my question is that I have a girl interested in joining my pre-law chapter, um, which is the only active chapter in Puerto Rico. She's an alum. Um, okay, I think Xenon, I actually got an email about this question um, from Naswara and I, um, answered her already earlier today, but what I told her basically was that um, unfortunately, since this student is an alum now and has already graduated and is currently enrolled at the law school, <clears throat> she's not eligible to join as a pre-law member um, of your chapter. She's more than welcome to attend your events and everything. She just can't vote in elections, run for office or anything, but she's more than welcome to just, you know, attend she just wouldn't be a member but if she's interested in chartering um a chapter at the law school 
because I'm not aware off the top of my head if there already is a charter in place at the law school and, you know, if it needs to be reactivated or anything. But if she does want to charter or react um, at her law school, just have her reach out to me directly and I'll get her connected to the right person that can facilitate that for her. Because we would also love to have that happen, um, especially in Puerto Rico, because um, I, sorry, I'd have to sing many praises to our pre-law chapter in Puerto Rico. You all um, are absolutely amazing. And I highly encourage you for people on this call, if you also want to see examples of what really great programming looks like um, and recruitment initiatives, this chapter is a fine example of that. So um, that's all. I just wanted to shout you all out. Okay, um, I have another question from Gianna. Are we able to partner with other pre-law chapters at other schools in the same city? If so, how would you recommend doing so? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I encourage um, that as well. If you want to, let's say, co-host an event with another um, pre-law chapter that's active and local, just um, send me an email and I'm happy to provide the officer contacts at that um, pre-law chapter to you um, so you all can get connected with that. So um, I have another question from David that's actually directed to our Puerto Rico chapter if they have social media or a point um, of contact. Um, so if anyone wants to, um, anyone from our Puerto Rico chapter wants to, you know, put that in the chat, um, you're welcome to do so. But for everyone to know, too, we actually keep a list on our website of all of our pre-law chapters. Um, and we include links to their chapter social media and website pages um, if they have them. And we update those things too. I also meant to say to folks, um, especially during spring elections and officer transitions, if there has been any changes to your chapter social media or websites, um, also let us know um, too, so we can get that updated on our website. Okay. Hey, y'all. Um, still have some time left. Um, and any other questions? Hi, Laurel. Um, if you're free to unmute yourself um, or, you know, or anything, if you want to ask your question verbally or in the chat. Hello. Um, I'm the treasurer of the Florida AM and um, Why for that's law for dream. And I just had a question on um, when do we have to submit our events by? So just so we know, so it doesn't sneak up on us. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So for your fall programming, um, that will be due uh, April 17th this year. Um, and yeah, and so the uh, incoming um, officers, the newly elected officers should be working on that um, with the help of the outgoing officers too. Okay, cool. Because um, the only reason I ask because uh, I'm the treasurer and um, Ari, um, she is the president and we are currently um, rising seniors. We graduate this semester. So being that it will be uh, new people in office, we just wanted to know that. So there wouldn't be, we wouldn't need to know the dates for a spring semester being that we're trying to get some events um, up and running now. Okay. Oh, all right. So yeah, if you were talking about spring programming right now, that was actually due to me last fall. Um, right. But if you have something tentative that you're working on, want me to review, um, I'm happy to take a look at that now. Um, or if you want to shoot me an email about it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, we just been having some trouble with our chapter because we had some graduating I think the whole board graduated. Um, so it was just a struggle us coming in and getting everybody in order and um, having new members come in. So yeah, so we are, so we're still able to see the events that we're trying to have for us. Okay. Yes, yes. And I'd um, definitely recommend going off of um, our programming template we have and our chapter operations guide that's on our um, website. It's, you'll find it in chapter five. Um, of the operations guide. 
Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm gonna um, move real quick to a, another question that was in the chat about, um, since we can't collect cash for chapter fees and need to provide a receipt, how should they be collected? Okay, so um, I wanna make a distinction real quick about like when it pertains to fees, um, if you're talking about the international initiation fee versus local chapter dues. So for the international initiation fee, we ask that you do not collect that because that is the membership fee for individual students. Um, students that are joining should be uh, joining directly online at www.pad.org you know, and they should be submitting their application and their payment or enrolling into a payment plan um, through our website. They should be, or at least, you know, in contact with Katie Gibbs and membership or someone from our office about that. Um, and, you know, we don't want officers collecting the um, initiation fee because oftentimes um, the money, for whatever reasons, um, doesn't always end up getting received by our office. And then the student that maybe paid their officers to join did pay that 125 let's say the officers graduated, that student comes back to us later and they're like, hey, I never received my um, new member materials. I was never initiated last the previous year or semester. Um, what's up with that? And then we have to tell them, well, you know, we never received this money or your membership application um, in full. So, you know, unless that student can provide a receipt, you know, um, so we can, you know, determine, um, you know, that they paid or at least so that our office gets that money, then there's not much we can do there. Now, moving on to local chapter dues, that's different. That should be written in your chapter's bylaws and that, you know, money is should be written within your chapter's budget and managed um, primarily by your chapter treasurer. That money may go back to your chapter's operating expenses or anything. And you, of course, are welcome to collect that um money and that is for you all to uh for the officers to be managing um we the o executive office do not get involved with that money um or anything so that's also um another reason too why it's important to make sure that when officer transitions are happening that new incoming officers have access to that bank account um I also want to make another point here too. I don't recommend that chapters use cash apps like, you know, Venmo, Cash App or anything. I know they come with minimal to no fees and can be very convenient, um, but they tend to cause more problems uh, than necessary down the line. Okay, um, I see Abigail has their hand raised. Um, so please feel free to unmute yourself and I'm happy to answer your question. Hi. Okay. So I know that Pod does have an open member policy. However, um, a question that we do have is that are we able to request that they go to a certain amount of recruitment events to be able to join the fraternity? I know like once they pay the national fees that we're not supposed to like haze or pledge or any of that, but are we able to say that they need to go to a certain amount of events to join our chapter of the fraternity. Um, is that allowed? The Yeah, the answer to that is no. Um, there, It's written within our open membership policy, but there should be no extra steps in the join process. Um, students, you're welcome to hold recruitment events um, and encourage students to attend. But if students can't make all of those recruitment events or, you know, or maybe don't physically attend those, um, that cannot be counted against them in any way to keep them from joining. Um, so yeah, there should be no extra steps in the join process. Students should, you know, as long as they're in good standing with their school, they should be able to submit their application, um, attest that they're in good standing with their school and, um, you know, be initiated so long as they've submitted all their um, application materials. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, um, Laurel, I see I see your hand is still raised. I don't know if 
it's another question uh, or anything. And then Akisha, um, your hand is raised. And I think also uh, we talked earlier um, about Regent University too. So I um, can definitely talk about that here. Um, or if you wanna, um, you know, wait, I guess until after this meeting, we talk about that a little bit more in depth. Um, yeah, I'm okay waiting. Okay. Okay, hello, hello. Yes, hi, Laura. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it's okay. I can raise my hand. Um, so uh, just to ask again, so you don't recommend Zelle or Cash App? So um, would a money order be okay? Um, yeah, a money order is fine. Um, and yeah, we our our preference is if you have like a bank account set up, like whether it's you know if your school. Um, assist with that, you know, like for student organizations to have an account set up through them or a banking, um, like a local banking institution near you. Um, and that allows us a, a little bit more, at least the executive office, a little bit more knowledge of like, you know, um, what bank that the chapter has been working with. Because when you go to a, like a um, having to set up an actual bank account, they usually ask, like I mentioned earlier, like tax information, stuff like that, and a letter of authorization. And I would provide that to you. And we do keep that in our records. Um, and that's that. So, and um, but yeah, it, just in case too of like down the line, if um, the chapter goes inactive or um, new officers come in and they want to know about that information, but they're like not sure where to start, at least our office is just like, hey, we had this letter of authorization or something like on file back in like 2018 or something and knew that your chapter had set up an account with like this local credit union or something versus cash app or Venmo where it's usually tied to one person's account, personal information, a social security number even, and it's an app on their phone and then they graduate and go and it just, you know, passwords and all that stuff just doesn't get passed along. Yes, ma'am. And I just want to, I know I asked this question again, but I just want to get everything clear and I just got it understood. So for us uh, planning events now and get, getting them in order. Um, so that deadline has already passed, Is that mm -hmm. so, but we can still reach out and I can still reach out to you or the president can still reach out to you and get it started. Yes. Um, okay. yeah. yeah, your chapter, like, it's, you're not penalized, by the way, or anything for, like, sending that information late, um, but, you know, better late than never, I'd say, because um, then I, <laughs> at least from my perspective as pre-law operations coordinator, I'm just going to be like, okay, is your chapter active? Are y'all doing anything? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I can even help to um, help you all with any logistics, if need be, um, or things to consider when I look at your programming, too. That'd be really appreciated. Thank you. So yes, we'll be reaching out soon. Okay, awesome. I look forward to it. Right. Okay, any other questions or anything? Um, now we're now currently at 3.58 my time. Laurel, do you have another question? I'm so sorry. I will be taking the hand down. <laughs> oh, that's okay. All right. Well, um, I will reiterate if anyone, um, you know, needs any further clarification on anything for spring uh, about file for Delta, um, you know, our policies, anything that I've covered today um, or not covered today, even, you know, please feel free to email me again at prelaw at pad.org. I'm happy to meet with you one on one over Zoom. You can call our office number um, on our website. Um, but yeah, I, I am here to be a resource to you all as student leaders and, you know, just assist you in your chapter operations and making sure that things go smoothly this semester. Um, so I'm very excited to work with you all um, and even some new faces and names that I see in this chat. Um, and um, with that said, I will give you back the rest of your day. And um, Akisha, if you wanna just stay on this call so you and I can um, discuss more in depth of your questions, then yeah, everyone, you're 
free to go. <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thanks. Have a nice one. All right. You too. Okay, Akisha. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Listen, I, you know, um, I'm working from home today, so I have my, like, business sweater, but I am promise that, or cannot promise if I'm actually in pajamas, too. <laughs> I completely understand. I have my one-year-old here. So if you see me dash across the screen, just forgive me in advance. No, no, no. You are totally fine. Yeah, I had the camera off because I'm like doing dishes and I'm like doing dinner and I'm like, Shh. so I, I totally, didn't want to take totally, away. <laughs> no, no, no. I totally get it. Um, so yeah, I'm like happy to talk. I also want to let you know about mm -hmm. so regent when i checked my records too before um this meeting they are officially inactive but we do have the chance to reactivate the chapter if you are, are um if that's something that you are open to okay yes <laughs> <laughs> and it starts um i'm interested in knowing like what's the process and mm -hmm. um like i said I, i'm interested in joining i do want to join i do want to be a part of something, of course, bigger than myself. I recently mm -hmm. retired from the military last month. And um, <laughs> so I'm just trying to, you know, get started with something outside of just going to school, you know, the usual yeah. routine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just have that experience, connect with people, network and things of that sort. Um, and I saw a list of uh, organizations that the uh, school had on their website so you know I'm going through all of them I'm like oh this looks pretty interesting mm -hmm. and I reached out to the coordinator of all um, activities on campus she pointed me to the president of I didn't know there was a difference between the pre-law and the law school one so then mm -hmm. that's what she told me so I kind of was gonna wait on her to respond and let me know what needed to be done but, you know, I, mm -hmm. I figured I'll go do my own research before she comes back to me whenever she gets time. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to know, like, you know, the whole process of starting what um, I know you talked about, you know, the turnover as mm -hmm. far as, you know, old um, board members or cabinet mm -hmm. members, however you want to address them as to new ones once selections are done and so on and so forth. What happens when you are trying to reactivate a chapter? Um, just start to finish. Cause I mean, I don't, I don't, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. So um, since region has been inactive for at least a whole year, um, mm -hmm. they have, okay. So you would have to go through a formal reactivation process. And um, I just, dropped into the chat um, are establishing a pre-law chapter guide, which uh, walks through um, on paper what is necessary to complete a charter or re reactivation effort. Um, I want to say to you, um, like up front, there are no deadlines to work on this process. Okay, um, good to know. So yeah, you can work on this at your leisure. I would recommend, um, you know, someone in your position that's like would potentially be embarking on this journey is to maybe talk to um, a faculty advisor uh, mm -hmm. or and, you know, see about gauging interest on your campus with other students, people in your classes um, that might be interested in this as well and also could potentially help you get this effort going okay mm -hmm. so uh, with this it's like as much support as you can get it like makes the process faster and makes certain things especially when there's paperwork involved um, a little less arduous um and so with the guide up um i wanted to drop down to page eight um because there has in like a condensed form like everything that's needed um, 
because all of those items, um, as you're working on them, turning them into me, and you can turn any of these things in, um, in whatever order you're comfortable with, um, and I will keep it organized for you. I will also be um, periodically checking as we get membership applications, um, let's say to uh, Regent University pre-law chapter, um, and I will be keeping track to see if like, like where it says bullet point two paid membership applications for at least 20 students, um, you know, I'm gonna be keeping track of that. And also too, if those students, if you can get those students to do, um, you know, like uh, payment plans, I'm so sorry, I was about to have a brain fart. <laughs> um, you know, pay, uh, payment plans, they are eligible to be counted towards the 20 students and also initiated. Um, kind of like what I said when I was addressing um, one of the students' questions uh, during the presentation about that. But um, yeah, so, cause I know the 125 fee can be a barrier potentially, you know, for um, people that are looking to join and right off the bat, they're like, hey, I can't afford that. Right. Um, and, you know, uh, and even with, um, you know, money stuff or whatever, even like one of the other things that we require is payment of the reactivation or charter fee. That in itself is 350. It can be paid fine. Um, what I and that's also, paid from the school. The school pays that. So the school can. I've had, I was going to say, so I've had um, efforts that have reached out to their school because, um, you know, sometimes schools, they'll have like funds set aside for like new organizations or reactivating ones. And so um, I would go to your school first to see if that's something that could they can A faculty advisor, again, can help work with you on that. Um, and, um, you know, I've had chapters fundraise. And I've also been in the position too, where like a chapter has everything completed, but they're like, we, you know, we may not have this 350 by the time, you know, we're ready to submit this petition, but we'll have it, you know, maybe within like a month or something or by a certain date. Mm -hmm. And I take that as a case by case basis. Okay. There's, some, there's some flexibility, I'll say, as, as long as it is paid at some point, but there is some flexibility there. Um, and yeah, so going back though, like everything else pretty much on this list, um, it's pretty quick, I think, you know, to be turned in. Um, there's the bylaws. You should definitely, I would definitely recommend working on that, you know, once you have some other students working with you on the effort and maybe you've all appointed yourselves as, you know, an e a functioning e-board, um, work on your bylaws together, um, you know, get your letters of support. You're going to need one from a faculty advisor anyway. Um, so you'll definitely need a faculty advisor again. And then you'll need a letter of support from the school. That can come from maybe, you know, your school's um, dean of students, you know, student activities, um, fraternity or sorority life, whoever is the individual or office that grants those approvals for organizations on your campus, I would find that out. Um, and when it comes to those letters of approval, we do have like templates for that, that like you can, you know, give them just to use and like sign off on. Um, okay. But yeah, everything though you work on this, um, you know, at your leisure, I would say it takes students at least a full academic year um, to get it done. And, you know, that can even be like with a board, you know, other students like helping get those materials done, um, a faculty advisor and that kind of thing, because it can take a little time, especially if you're like having to wait for school approval on it. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I'll go ahead. Oh, yeah, I was just going to end on the point. Um, once, you know, I see like, okay, we've ticked off everything. We've, you know, met all of this. I'm going to submit it all into a petition packet um, and, you know, on your behalf and then send it to our international executive board. Executive board, they have final approval and it usually, it takes them no longer than a week um, oh. to approve the effort. And then you're cleared to have an initiation ceremony and all this fun stuff. So 
that's okay. like the react process in a nutshell okay mm-hmm. okay so um it seems like it's gonna be a a grueling process possibly um hopefully not yeah hopefully not it was uh, an active chapter mm-hmm. before Mm -hmm. So, and you said it probably has been deactivated for about a year. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll also reach out to the uh, president of the uh, law school uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she can definitely point me in the right direction and give me some pointers of who exactly to talk to and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll I'll have to take a look over this. I mean, I'm glad it's not time specific because uh, as you can see, you know, life is yeah. Life. Here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's present. <laughs> it's right here. Yes. <laughs> and there's there's another one. Yeah. So, um I'm just glad that that's kind of mm-hmm. the you know that that was put out in advance so that I know like I don't have to kind of rush or put everything on the backboard and and focus completely on this only so Mm -hmm. um yeah I'm excited about it uh I would definitely like to have that done um now with the officers once we get enough people enrolled Mm -hmm. um you said what it says 20 people Mm -hmm. um now then we hold elections and all that stuff after that and um yes during during the process I would I would say so okay so regent because regent is inactive um we kind of waive actually like it's not it's not, this is not a written rule, but we kind of waive the elections process um, when it comes to reacts and charter efforts. Mm-hmm. Uh, region is already chartered. So, you know, of course there's our international policies and everything that region would potentially be beholden to. Mm-hmm. But um, since you all are like in the process of reactivating, it's really just a matter of, you know, just sitting down and especially the students that I would say are probably like, more like the the more um enthusiastic ones that are probably assisting you know Mm -hmm. just discussing what roles each person would be comfortable with and you can just pick those people starting off if Mm -hmm. your campus does have um I would check with your campus though because sometimes campuses also have like their own specific rules of how leadership is elected and there may be an elections process to go through Okay. Well, um, but in this case, at least on the patent, I would say you're literally fine to just amongst yourselves decide who wants to be who, um, because you also have to submit as part of your petition packet, um, you know, a list of which members are going to serve on the, um, you know, reinstating e board. And I wouldn't, I personally would not have you go through like a whole elections process and everything with that because the chapter hasn't even been officially reactivated yet. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what I was thinking, mm-hmm. you know, go through all this and then we haven't been reactivated and for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. like you know what? No, don't activate. Yeah. Or, we did all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to yeah. make it hard. I'm not going to make it harder than necessary. Um, so yeah. Um, also, I'm sorry. I just have to say, your baby is so cute. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, he's. Oh, that's that's. Thank you. He's waiting. Oh, okay. I'll, 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 I'll take it. I'll take. It. I was gonna be like, oh, are you helping Mama out? Are Are you also gonna be helping with the react? <laughs> he's gonna be like, I need your attention all the time. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, um, but yeah. Um, so. You don't have to go through like formal elections or anything with that though. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good to know. Um, let me think what else. So okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I I I know I I'm just trying to get it all get it all in. 
and no worries myself, again so. um <laughs> i say i'm i'll tell you what um shoot me an email um mm-hmm. And, you know, at prelawpad.org. And like, I can also like send you again, just in like writing of like, this is what the React process looks like. And that'll at least like also start like our, you know, email chain back and forth too. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to assist you with that as I can. Okay. I appreciate that. So mm-hmm. I'll do that. I'll, and that would be the email that you sent a reminder from. That's the same yes. email. Okay. Yes. So I just I guess respond to that or well get the email from there Mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah I'll do that and then I'll reach out to the president of the law school chapter Mm -hmm. as well and see what she's talking about um like you said maybe the school has a different approach as far as how leadership goes so she might be able Mm -hmm. to kind of give me a better understanding of that Mm -hmm. if that's the case Mm -hmm. and then I can go through the um packet you just sent me and kind of get a better understanding of it all and then we can go from there I don't know how long it's going to take um I am prior military I don't know if you dealt with military people before but we're like go 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 go. I know (laughs) I have um one of our chapters at American Public University School System is um their school is online and they they have a lot of military folks. So I understand the energy. I like the energy. Yeah, yeah. it's like, <laughs> come on, let's go, let's go. Yes. <laughs> Get it done. And yes. I mean, you know, I'm older than a typical student. So it's like, okay, I have to be your mom now. Oh <laughs> and my that's goodness. okay. I can do that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that though, but you know, I kind of have a feeling that's what's going to happen. So, I mean, that's fine. I, I just hope to at least at minimum get the 20 students. Cause I'm sure that's, you know, needed minimum 20 people to join. Oh, or, you reminded me, but I also want oh. to tell you too, to help get those 20 students, um, uh-huh. I would be happy to send you free recruitment materials too. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so definitely shoot me an email um, and let me know the best address where I could send a box of recruitment materials to you um, okay. for tabling purposes or anything um, that you may have. So, yeah. And we do that after we get approval from the school and all that, not before. You can do that now. You can, oh. but you, yeah, recruit. Okay. That's part of it. Yeah, yeah. You can do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll send you my, um, my information on email when we get done Okay. sometime today. All right. No rush. <laughs> yeah. No, again, no rush. Okay. Well, this was so helpful. I really appreciate it. I'm excited. I'm glad. So, um, yeah. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Uh, All, right. All right. It's going to go good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, question sorry yes so mm-hmm. the 350 dollars. we didn't really mm-hmm. get too detailed into that but how mm-hmm. how does chapters get that fee to pay to get the you know the money to you like how how do they go about getting that money do they collect oh. from students do they mm-hmm. i don't know the school um, give- yeah logistically like there's a couple things you could do um if students are comfortable with pitching in, that can be a big if too, because again, that's like the 125 individual membership. And um, then- yeah. <clears throat> and of course too, it's also like communicating with them of like, hey, like we also have to get final approval on this React effort. Um, mm-hmm. And part of that is like, there's the 350 fee, um, which I also should mention too that the 350 fee is not, there isn't a renewal thing on that as well. So like as the chapter remains active, if like, you know, in fall, like we're not asking for that semesterly annually. Okay. So it's just a one-time thing just to get it activated. Okay. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so if students, I've had some students fund that themselves. Um, uh, The the main thing I usually advise though is go to the school first because your school. Right. and I would, yeah, I think too, like maybe when you just talk to one of the law officers, um, because it, I'm also quite sure the process is the same for them with maybe trying to be activating. If the law officers have recently run into that, 
um, like a reactivation or charter there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, at, or just in general, I would ask them like maybe some advice they might have on fundraising. Cause you could also hold a fundraising event too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then for the fees for the activation mm -hmm. fees for the student. So mm -hmm. say I'm here, you know, I'm trying to get this thing started. It's not mm -hmm. activated as of yet, but I am in the process of doing it. I'm working through the paperwork. I'm doing all the, mm -hmm. you know, checklists, everything. Mm -hmm. When do I submit my $125 to become a part of the program? Do I wait until everything is done or can I do it before? Or I don't know how that works. You can do it before. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to, you don't have to wait. Cause I, I think as far, as long as our office has received like some payment towards the initiation fee from you, um, mm -hmm. by the time, like I submit the petition, cause to, cause we want to make sure that you count towards like 20, um, paid applications. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I can start that process. And then while I'm working through getting mm -hmm. the chapter reactivated I'm still mm -hmm. you know so yeah. uh, but I won't be attached to a chapter yet though because mine has not been activated you would still be attached to region oh, okay yeah and and that's another thing too I think like as you're recruiting and like students are like oh, you know I'm gonna start joining now um and you know make sure that they join um re like in the drop down when they go on the website it should be relaunch chapter um, so that way they're counted towards the 20 students. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, and you're pretty flexible as far as for questions and so on. Best to reach you via email. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Or we can, all, we can always like have a check-in like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's good to know. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll get, to working on that I'll look everything over I'll reach out to the um law school president and or yeah I think she's a president and then um we'll go from there and I'll see how how this journey goes I'm I'm excited about it okay yay keep, keep excitement <laughs> keep the excitement but again too it's like don't think of like you know oh my god like deadlines I have to you know right like, yeah <clears throat> Do what you do what you can. And, you know, again, our office is here to help as we can. I appreciate that. All right. All right. Well, thank you. You have a good rest of your afternoon. You too. Um, thank hope you. to hear from you again soon. And um, yeah, just shoot me an, an email about some of the stuff we talked about and I'll have a response for you by tomorrow. At least. Okay. No problem. Thank you All so right. much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.